Okay guys, I know that some of you are struggling a little bit with the concepts of chi-square and that the lab we did outside didn't really help matters all that much. Um, that's nothing to worry about. Don't worry if the lab was confusing. Um, in fact, I'd rather have you just kind of go through the motions with the lab than um, worry too much about, I guess, why it doesn't make sense. It really wasn't set up perfectly for a chi-square, a proper chi-square test. So um, I'm going to just review with you one more time what we learned about for chi-square so that you, um, if you're struggling with it or if you need some help with the go-formative chi-square, um, you have that. And really the most important thing is that you understand the go-formative chi-square. So as a recap of what we learned about in class, um, this was a basic um, study done between Marsh Bedstraw and Bottle's Edge and they basically took a hundred quadrats. Twelve of them contained uh, both of the species. Three only Marsh Bedstraw, 29 only Bottle's Edge, and 56 had neither. Now this right here, what we have here, this is known as the observed. This is the observed data, okay? So, um, with all of these, you have to try to determine um, with chi-square for ecology, you're determining if there's an association between the two species. This is a little different than the chi-square with genetics. Genetics, you're basically determining if there's a significant difference between the observed and the expected that's showing you that the genes must be linked. But with this one, you're testing whether or not there's two species are associated. So um, you want to start, obviously, with your null hypothesis. And your null hypothesis always basically says the same thing. There is no significant difference between the distribution of the two species. So it's random, okay? And then the alternative is that there is a significant difference and that they are associated. You do not have to worry about whether or not they are positive or negatively associated with each other. So step one, after you define the hypotheses, then you're going to complete a contingency table, a contingency table of observed frequencies. So you basically make a table that looks just like this one. And you obviously, um, this I filled in already for you, um, these total columns, but you would probably have to do that afterwards. So basically you're gonna do um, three across, three down, your two species live on either side, and then you're going to fill in the presence and absence of each species. So there was 12 that contained both, three that only had marsh bed straw, so that'd be here, an absent bottle sedge, 29 that was only um, bottle sedge, and then 56 that had neither. So this is what you're going to do for all problems, including the one um, for chi-square. Now it's basically set up very similarly where we're looking at species on the edge of a coral reef. We're looking at specifically sea urchins and algae. We want to see if there's an association. So you're going to set up a contingency table of observed frequencies. Start with your null, then the alternative, okay? Then on your own paper, I want you to complete the contingency, contingency table for observed values just like we talked about, okay? Um, okay, so coming back here, once you do that, you should have an observed con frequency contingency, contingency table. I have no idea why I'm having such a hard time saying that word. Sorry. Um, that looks like this. Step three, the third step. So just to recap, step one, define your hypotheses. Step two, make a contingency table of observed frequencies. Step three, you're going to make an expected values table, okay? You have to calculate the expected values. This is pretty simple. Overall, what we have here is um, we have the row total times the column total divided by the grade total. I'm going to do that up here. So to find the expected value for when marsh bed straw and bottle sedge are both present, what is the expected value for when they're both present? You're going to look at this column for observed, and you're going to say the row, to 
the row total, which is 41, times the column total, which is 15. So 41 times 15 divided by 100, which is the grand total. That's going to go right in this box. You're going to do the same thing for each of the boxes that are essentially represented here. So this top box here for the absence of Mark Spetra and the present of Bottle Setch, it is 41, which is the row total, times 85, divided by 100. You can do this four times. And essentially what you're going to get is a table that looks quite a lot like this. Okay, So these are your expected values. This is step three. Moving on to step four, you're going to calculate your chi-square value. Now, if you jump back over to the GoFormative, we're now here. We're basically past the step two of the contingency table of expected values. Moving on to the chi-square value, okay, and um, you're going to record your chi-square value here. To do your chi-square value, this formula looks a little bit crazy, but x squared, this stands for chi-square, this is equal to the sum of the observed minus the expected squared divided by the expected. So we have our two little areas that match up between, so this top left box under observed values and the top left box under expected. These are going to be your observed and expected for the first sum. So it's going to be 12 minus 6.15 squared divided by 6.15. Then you're going to add that to the next one, which is 29 minus 34.85 squared divided by the expected, okay, which is 34.85. So to flip over to the next, this is essentially what that looks like. You're going to do this four times, all right? And what you end up, what you should end up getting for this example is essentially five or four values that you add up and you get your chi-square value. In this case, it's 11.1, okay? Chi-square value of 11.1. So at this point, um, you've gotten your value. You have to know what to do with it. So this is known as your calculated value, okay? Calculated chi-square value. Now we're going to work on how we get our critical value. To determine the degrees of freedom, it's the number of rows minus 1 times the number of columns minus 1. Number of rows is 2. The number of columns is 2, okay? So, sorry, this should be rows and columns. So what we have here is basically... Um, 2 minus 1 times 2 minus 1 is equal to 1. This is going to be pretty common pretty much every time you have to do a chi-square because if you look at your skill up here, testing for association between two species, your skill is only two species, which means you're only ever going to have two columns and two rows. Okay? So, what do we do with this? We always shoot for our 95 percentile um, certainty value, which is 0 0.05, and we have one degree of freedom. So where 0 0.05 and 1 come in, in, across to each other, we have a critical value of 3.841. So our critical value is 3.841, where calculated is 11.1. The rule is basically if the calculated is greater than the critical, reject the null. By rejecting the null, you're saying that there is a significant difference and that the two species are associated with each other, okay? But there's, there is a significant difference between the distribution and they are associated either positively or negatively, okay? That it's not random. The distribution is not random. If you reject the null, you're saying that the distribution is not random. So in this particular case, our calculated was 11.1, .1, our critical was 3.84, so we are going to reject the null, accept the alternative, that there is dissociation. 
Okay, I really hope this helped. Let me know if you still need um, more explanation. Go ahead and try to tackle that. Go form it if you, if you haven't already. It is basically the exact same thing we just talked about, so it should be a bit easier. If you need help with genetics chi-squared, I am happy to help you with that as well. See you soon.